Hey guys and welcome to the show. So in today's video we're going to be creating some enemies. Here we see we've got some that are randomly spawned. Now there isn't too much interactivity here. We're not shooting at them. I mean we can but it's not going to do anything and they're not shooting at us. One cool thing we've got is you'll notice that the enemies don't bunch up too much. If they end up getting too close to each other they'll veer off a little to the side, give themselves some distance before pursuing us once again. Here we go. See those guys will start moving off. See that? They kind of space each other out a bit. Later on in this video, I'll show you what that's like without the bunch up code, and you'll notice that it's just horrible. So this is kind of the direction we want to go. Later on, we can perhaps give them some more intelligence. All right, so the nice thing about this video, this video in particular, is not only are we going to be creating the enemies, but we're going to be exploring some other concepts, which are quite uh, exciting. Like, for example, there is no difference really between a player and an enemy. The enemy has some sort of AI and the player is controlled by the user, but but essentially the, the mechanics behind what makes them fly, gives them a target, that kind of stuff can be inherited from some sort of parent. So let's go ahead and add an enemy. No sprite. Actually, we can go to our player and also just remove the sprite for now. Then I'm going to create the parent, so I'm just going to call this object plane because both the player and an enemy, they're both planes. Let's give them a parent. Right, let's start with the player and we're going to go to the create event. So we choose a sprite, we give it some characteristic speed, um, you know, the image speed, offsets, certain things like that. Now, because we're going to be using the same sprites for now, I haven't imported a different sprite yet. All of this code can actually be extracted into the parent. So we're going to go create event, stick that in there. Then if I delete the create event from the player, you'll see that it shows up as being inherited. And I can actually access the parent event three here. I can't do anything with it. It says it's locked, but um, basically it still shows us there is an event going on there from the parent. Another thing we can do is alarm zero. So when the enemies will have to shoot, they can use the same kind of mechanic. So let's get rid of that one. And we can also do the step event over there. Quite straightforward stuff. Now this one's going to be a little bit of a tweak, but it is similar. So step event, let's paste that in there. Okay, so because this is the parent, we shouldn't use things that are specific to one of them. So for example, mouse X and mouse Y, this isn't exactly true. The enemies aren't going to be moving to mouse X and mouse Y. They're going to be moving to the player and the player is going to be moving to mouse X and mouse Y. So what I wanna do is actually change this to a variable we're gonna create called target X and target Y, okay? The rest of the characteristics um, the child can inherit from the parent, like, like the image angle, the rotation speed, things like that, that's not important. And then to the player's step event actually, which would be empty, we say target X and target Y are actually equal to mouse X and mouse Y. So you see what I did there? It's exactly the same as it was before, only we've extracted that into our step event, which means the enemy, for example, can set its target to the player's X and Y. Now, because we're using a step event here and we want to use that from the parent, we have to say event inherited, just like that. Okay, very good. Now, because the enemy, where is he? Here he is. He's uh, getting all these ones. He has to override the create event to set what his target will be. Target X and target Y, which are gonna be set to object player X and object player Y. Again, event inherited, so we get that from the parent. And I'm also gonna put this in the step event. So I'm putting this in the create just because sometimes if we have another event that runs before the create or in parallel with the create, these variables are at least initialized to something. Otherwise, we could get some weird undefined errors. So there we go. Create and step event here are identical. And that's that. Now we need to think how we're going to get these enemies into our room. Well, I like to use uh, little controller objects. They can spawn things into the world. So for now, it's only job. Oh, let's actually go put it in the world. Its only job would be to, you know, spawn some some enemies. So we're just going to use a loop, for example, randomize the seed, get a random number. Um, 
between, oops, that was supposed to go there. Random range. Let's see, we can manage, I think, between, uh, let's say, four and eight enemies at once. Later on, we're going to make this more sophisticated. But for now, it's just to make sure the concepts are working. I is less than number. I is plus. And here we can say, um, obviously, we want them to spawn at a random X and a random Y. So we can use I random range again. Zero and X coordinate. Okay, so that's room width anywhere in our room across the x-axis and anyway anywhere in our room across the y-axis just like that okay and instance creates layer a typo and we want that at random x random y on the instances layer and see more space there object enemy so it's a brand new instance of object enemy okay so at this point um, the enemies are inheriting pretty much every event we're setting up who they're targeting and this is for later can shoot over there the player we've extracted its create event we've extracted the alarm zero the step event is setting up the target and we can still do our shooting which is very specific to this And spacewalk again to restart the room. And the controller is going to be making our guys, but it's going to spawn when it does. The plane, which is the parent, it's going to select a nice sprite for our planes. Um, it's going to be telling them to head towards their targets, and uh, this is just going to control the alarm for now. So let's fire this up. Now at this point, we're going to get some serious bunching from our four between four and eight enemies. So if I were to circle round and round and oh, here we go. Uh, oh, that's supposed to be instances. If I were to circle round and round and round while these enemies are traveling towards us because they're going at the same speed and have the same turning potential, eventually they, see they are working, they will kind of form one image. Just check this out. Slowly but surely, if I just keep doing this and this, these guys are going to join together. And here we go. Okay, slowly. See, those two guys have already merged together. They're starting to become kind of invisible. Now we don't know how many enemies are there. That's kind of lame. So let's go on to the next step, which is we're going we're gonna to make them disengage from the combat situation for about a second. So they'll actually turn towards us. They'll collide with one of their guys. They'll stop turning towards us and just veer off a bit to the left or the right. And then they'll rejoin the chase a little bit later. So it's going to be really cool. It adds a, a little bit more realism to it. And to do that, let's go to the enemy. Let's make some enemy specific code. I'm going to call it redirect. And we're going to say, don't redirect yet, only redirect um, for specific cases. So we're going to go to the step event and we're going to change this. I'm going to use it up there for reference. But what we're going to say is if you don't need to redirect, then let's put all that code inside. And how do we know if we need to redirect? So if there's a collision, at a specific point, and that's going to be the X and Y of the enemy with another object enemy. And we're going to say true for precision and true for not me. If that occurs, so if my X and Y coordinate is matching that of another enemy's X and Y coordinate, then I'm going to set redirect to true. Okay. So with redirect equal true, I need to now fire off an alarm to say when can you stop disengaging you stop redirecting let's say room speed times by one okay so after a second of redirecting away it's going to then follow the chase again so to match this in we're going to say well if there isn't a need to redirect well then i can do that very straightforward simple as that so so yes, if there's a collision, veer away, stop following. Otherwise, get the player. Now we need to create that alarm, which we're simply just going to select set redirect is false. So if you really want to see the redirect in action a bit more, we can increase the amount of time 
So we can say three seconds of redirect. Actually two, that's, that's a bit long. So if we play this now, as soon as two enemies collide with each other, one of them, or both of them I think, is gonna veer off to the side. So let's get them to bunch up a little. Here we go. Watch, one of them's gonna just stop. There we go, so they've decided to stop and now they're engaging again. And if those green guys collide, there we go, they're stopping the engagement and then they're engaging again. So with this in place, see they, they go off on their way and they're re-engaging. It's gonna be really cool, it adds a bit of, uh, of a bit of AI. It's, it's very dumb, but it's better than everything bunching up. So with this, they should never bunch up, which will cause the player to feel like um, there's a bit too much collision happening without any consequence. So that pretty much wraps up this video. We've added some basic enemies. It's gonna be quite fun to carry on to the next part. I hope you found this educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you wanna get videos like this a couple days early, check out my Patreon page. There are some cool little perks. Project files for this video are in the description. If you have any suggestions, please let me know here or on Twitter. And until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.